thankfully, I waited. Oh. So full disclosure, this is being recorded on the 9th of August, although the date will be different, but it sort of ties into everything that's happened this past week. <clears throat> so although it's out by a couple of days, because it'll be set as Fridays the 7th, I wanted time to <sighs> dwell on things, because... If I'd have done a video Monday or Wednesday to some extent and then to a greater extent Friday there would be a lot of cussing and swearing maybe from the outset from the off um, but You know, I've allowed to calm myself somewhat to try and be logical here. So the big issue is, at least in WWE's terms, the ratings are struggling. And they're trying to come up with new and different ideas to get those ratings back up. So... The apparent proposal is uh, a, a faction that is seemingly wanting to destroy the company. Um, a, a portion of one brand wanting to take a very different approach although it's very different in inverted commas <clears throat> and the one which is hit and miss but is probably more successful than the other two involving celebrity people because they think that will get more eyes on the product. Which in that case is because there is direct competition. So, <clears throat> enough with the, the vagaries. So, at least in terms of raw stuff, The, this was the start of the reveal of Retribution. The great thing is, nobody knew they were called Retribution until that was the working title that the Dirt Sheets were saying. And then all of a sudden, by Smackdown, which was obviously recorded Tuesday, to air as live on Friday, Retribution is the name that stuck. Um, you know... Monday we saw various things go wrong, be it microphones or uh, lighting and whatever, which apparently was because the generators got taken out with Molotov cocktails. And then they're just as special by uh, invading the building, saying that it's their place now, you know, practically trying to hurt everybody, including the um, the performance center of people watching at ringside, and also you know proceeding to sort of smash and destroy everything they can, including bringing a chainsaw and cutting the ropes up. So, in essence, given that what we've, what we've seen in recent months via the George Floyd protests which evolved into 
Black Lives Matter protests, um, police brutality protests, all that sort of thing. What we've seen is what's been described by both sides. Um, well, no, I shouldn't say. I don't want to say both sides or many sides because that's playing into the problem. But from a lot of wide ranging views, the Antifa movement, of which the stereotype is hooded, mask covered individual to try and, you know, have some sort of anonymity. And then proceed, proceeding to take advantage of, I don't know, um, instability in society and use it to their advantage for whatever they want. A few months back, when they first talked about <clears throat> COVID, because I think I can say that now, affecting WWE's production and obviously not being able to have fans, but then obviously incorporating people from the Performance Center eventually, is they wanted to do something to have fans escape from what they're seeing on the news. So within literally weeks, months of that being their repertoire, they're literally trying to be the news. We are still seeing issues in Portland and Seattle, you know, 10 weeks on. I don't even know. I'm just going to have a quick look to see if the Twitch channel that has coverage of all these things is live as of the time I'm recording. To get, you know, number of days. It's been. It doesn't seem to be, but it's somewhere in the seventies. So we're clearly talking ten weeks since protests like this happen. You know, protests happened, but then at the same time you had the <coughs> masked individuals in sight, sort of violence in some extent so yeah the escapism is now bringing that into the forefront of the storyline of which from all I can tell from the rumours from uh, the various sources I don't want to just say dirt sheets because you know, there's there's people reporting for pretty sort of big, um, more sort of mainstream things like Alex McCarthy at Talk Sport, um, rather than just the wrestling MMA centric places like The Observer, like Fightful, like PW Insider, um, 411 Mania, Wrestle Votes. All these, <clears throat> I'm probably missing, you know, PW Torch or loads of places. But the word is that it's basically NXT talent that is the next wave of getting pushed up to the main roster that is part of this. Which one would explain why they aren't attacking NXT, but the problem is. Every time you see NXT, what do you see before it? A WWE logo. So unless we have Retribution attacking and destroying the the bed of NXT, it's a bit too hypocritical as well. Yet alone, how is this escapism from issues that people may be having in real life? I am just waiting for the moment when we have another sort of issue that comes up that leads to more massed vigilantes trying to in 
incite violence or fear or whatever. And it to go wrong. And people die. And then WWE taking this storyline and using it as a sort of way to get people interested in their product looks absolutely... It looks... It, uh, not more, but nearly on the same level as WWE's uh, relationship with Saudi Arabia, which has been in question for a lot of time. Um, it's v it's very it's a tinder box. If one thing goes wrong, the whole stuff goes, and it's going to be really Vince that gets the blame we hear reports that backstage it's a mess some of the shows were basically just let's put it out and start working on the next week's show because they're taping it the same day so in some cases it's just do it as it is just r run with it sort of thing Case in point, <clears throat> here is Shane McMahon and his big idea with seemingly strippers from an adult entertainment club um, and like, you know, Raw Underground is what it's titled. Uh, the quote from Shane was, Very little rules, lots of excitement, carnage, chaos, and quite frankly, lots of things I personally would like to see. Except, um, everything that happened in terms of the fighting, the idea is supposed to look like a shoot fight. But the problem is, it just looks the same as the real wrestling. What probably doesn't help that is the camera work with it. Now, there's been a lot of people um, saying, and I certainly, having seen it, understand how it is borrowing, copying, stealing, whatever you want to say, from what Shikara did. Um, this was something that I believe some of the more junior members of the company wanted to do and it was done as a teaser at um, some events that they did and got put out online uh, sort of by the Crucible faction which was the faction that was growing up with Ophidian going against Quackenbush which in hindsight wow um, but the idea with that is Shikara's main product was okay there were sort of cameras filming it handheld but you also have the sort of hard cam and you, you, you let things flow you know you go to one shot you know go for however many seconds then if you needed another shot to get a better view, you'd switch it. Then another so many seconds. Whereas with the Crucible style, it was supposed to be more guerrilla style. Um, you know, the camera was shaky. You'd sometimes zoom in and out because it's supposed to be, you know, guerrilla style. Somebody sort of similar to how we had the whole shield filming their promos and you know the camera would be shaky and they'd zoom in on certain bits like as if they were doing it manually themselves and in that respect it works because there's a difference from the formal presentation of Shikara and the informal presentation of the crucible work which you know was sort of the the subplot to Shikara 
at least at the time. Um, so I can I understand why people are unhappy that WWE was sort of presented this as sort of a maybe something they could consider in case they were interested in tape library so then they can obviously have more indie matches as part of some of the wrestlers that are in there because obviously a fair a fair number of WWE talents have come through that company um, you know, Cesaro uh, Brian Steen well Owens Sami Zayn um, I think Tyler Black slash Seth Rollins probably would have as well maybe either way clearly you know a lot of people are unhappy that WWE took it. The reason why I don't think it works in WWE is when you look at the main product, what is it? What well, is the title of the video? We need to talk about Kevin. It's Mr. Dunn and his current attitude in presentation of the product. It is short, sharp cuts every other second, sometimes even quicker than every second. Every time there's a blow, camera cut, camera cut, camera cut, camera cut, camera cut. <sighs> or if not camera cut, the best bit was when there was a, I think it was a chair shot between last year, between Corbin and uh, Rollins. And as the chair was swung up and down multiple times, the cameraman is there with his shoulder camera, literally up, down, up, down, up, down, having to film it. And then, of course, every time it actually goes in to where the shot happens, not only is it going down, but it's slightly being zoomed in as well. So the zoom in... Zoom in down, zoom out up, zoom in down, zoom out up. So when you have that style presentation that you've had for a number of years that I've complained about lots of times, and then present pretty much the same thing in supposedly this, you know, undercover, kept, um, you know, fight club, if you will, I know a lot of people have compared it to that. It doesn't work. Because it just seems to be presented in the same style. Sort of brings us back around to Retribution again, because the presentation of that. I like, I, I like the premise of a group coming in and attacking. But... You know, the the best thing you could have done with that is have it be Tazawa's ninjas, but they're not actually Tazawa's ninjas. Have them dressed up so they don't look like modern day stuff. You know, have them. No, I'm not saying Lost Conquistador style, but have them sort of completely vague, so there's literally no idea of. Who they are rather than oh well that person's hair probably means it's that person that man or that woman um, so yeah the, the, the premise is still good but the issue was again with the presentation they scared the camera people off sometimes you know some of them got you know attacked some of them just ran off because they didn't want to be attacked so the cameras were just sort of lying on the floor. So then, rather than just have the camera shot from the hard camera where it'd be, they have multiple camera shots from inside the building that clearly don't look like CCTV cameras, it's, you know, actual production cameras. 
and you get multiple shots with editing every few seconds. If nobody is safe, surely, in theory, there should be nobody doing the camera cuts. Because if the, you know, if, if, if the whole thing's supposed to be in chaos, how can they be doing camera cuts and sort of editing when this is all going down? It just seems impractical. All this, in terms of the main two brands, is annoying because you've got a very interesting build with Strowman and Wyatt slash Fiend with the way that that's been done over the past few weeks. <clears throat> the Seth stuff, admit that if you, the Seth. Ray stuff was stupid with the eye. But Dominic's handled it himself well, and I'm excited for the match with Seth. But certainly on the past week's Raw, the angle with Joe sort of standing up for Tom Phillips doing his reporting, you know, saying that you've got to be unbiased. Um. Which is fair, but the problem is, um, it just feels a little a little too sort of <clears throat> dodgy and preachy. And convertery, which I'm guessing is the idea. But if you overkill it, people will not be interested. Um, and of course, the Drew Orton situation. I don't know. We obviously know the only reason Orton is in this situation is because Edge is injured and they can't do the rematch that they were clearly aiming to do at SummerSlam because of Edge's injury. At backlash. <clears throat> um, so they've inserted him into this, but Drew and Orton have been very good at the promo work that they've done over the past few weeks, building towards it all. You know, they have good stuff like that, and then. Oh. On the women's front, there's so much cross-brand stuff, it's getting confusing. And I'm pretty sure, at least on this week's SmackDown, there was, I think, no women's wrestling. They did the angle with sort of um, Mandy and Sonya. And all that stuff. And they had the conference call with Stephanie that Bailey and Sasha had. You know, about having a battle royal next week to find Bailey's challenger and that um you know, Sasha is hoping that Bailey can beat Asuka so Sasha doesn't have to defend her title with SummerSlam against Asuka. Um, uh, but other than that, the women's stuff really didn't have that much this week. That much of note. Because if two women have all the gold, including your tag titles, how can we have multiple storylines? Yeah, this is a company that preaches, you know, women's evolution and everything. But if there's not much of a platform for them to get a, a, ch a chance to shine, admittedly we had the Riot Squad and the Iconics as well, I guess on Raw. But 
That's the thing. When you look at the tag division, who have we got left? The Riot Squad, the Iconics, and that's it. Kyrie's not with Asuka because she's gone back to Japan. Bliss is obviously busy at the minute with Cross. It's just... I don't know. Because of how long this has gone, I'll save the NXT concerns that I have. And some issues that I seemingly have with AEW as well. Might as well do that in a separate video. Um, so yeah. I'll be back with that another day whenever it will be scheduled. So, um, check out all the other stuff on here from Owen, AJ and myself. Various videos, you know, on the channel for you to check out. And, yeah, I'm concerned. That's sort of all I want to say. It's got to the level where I really don't know what to think of WWE anymore. I didn't even get to Seth's comments about people not being interested in long-term storylines. They're just there for short-term stuff. No, I like long-term storylines. It's just they need to be long-term storylines that are written well. And that actually have people interested and invested. I'll see you on the NXT AEW one.